Goose Flora Fauna. Fauna. This month is the 70th, 75th anniversary of the atom bombs used in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. There's a new nuclear arms race. Would your administration abolish nuclear weapons and work to a nuclear free world? Absolutely. I've been, it's been part of my stump speech since the first time I announced my exploratory committee. And none of the major party candidates, except for Mike Ravel when he was in briefly, have even spoken to this issue. In a bulletin, the atomic scientist has their doomsday clock the closest it's ever been to midnight. And they've had that clock going back to the 40s. Meanwhile, we've got out all these treaties from the New York, New, Iran nuclear deal to the Intermediate Range Forces uh, Treaty that Trump just got out of, and a whole bunch of others. The last treaty that's bilateral between the US and Russia concerning strategic arms expires next February 5th. And none of these fools are even talking about it. It should be a top campaign issue. So what we're talking about is taking peace initiatives to reduce tensions, cut the military budget 75%, withdraw from these endless wars, start bringing our troops home from these 800 foreign military bases, pledge no first use of nuclear weapons, disarm to a minimum credible deterrent, and then go to the other eight nuclear powers and say, we want complete and mutual nuclear disarmament and go there with the support of world public opinion. The 122 nations that agreed to the text of the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons three years ago this month. And the International Campaign for the Abolition of Nuclear Weapons got the Nobel Peace Prize for that achievement. And hardly anybody knows that. And it is criminal. And people were talking at the beginning of this about how the mainstream media, uh, why don't they cover us? Yeah, why don't they cover us? Because we'll talk about this issue. Why don't they cover this issue? This is a life or death issue. And, you know, the media acts like it's out of sight, out of mind. You know, after Gorbachev and Reagan agreed to reductions and then the Soviet bloc fell apart, people have forgot about these weapons. We're in a modernization process that was initiated under the Obama administration, continued under Trump. It's a multi-trillion dollar enterprise to make our strategic arms six times faster. They call it hypersonic. That means you no longer launch on warning when you see enemy uh, missiles coming at you. You have to launch in anticipation that the other side launches so they don't wipe you out in a first strike. And as we modernize, so have Russia and China. We're in a new nuclear arms race. And then there's this other thing. They're putting more nukes in the tactical, more tactical nukes in the conventional forces. And the doctrine that the U.S. adopted, Russia's adopted, is called escalate to de-escalate, which is nuts. It's insane. The idea is if you're in a conventional war and you're losing, use some tactical nukes to throw back the other side, and then you de-escalate. It's not going to happen. you got to read Daniel Ellsberg's second Pentagon Papers. It's called the Doomsday Machine. He was a nuclear war planner before he was a Vietnam War planner. And he documents going back to the way it was set up in the 50s, and he studied this whole thing and down to where it is today. Once one nuke flies, they all fly automatically. That's what he calls it the doomsday machine. We got one, Russia's got one, China's got one, India and Pakistan got ones against each other. There's enough weapons between those two to create a nuclear winter that'll wipe us all out. I mean, we're in deep, deep trouble, and it's not even being talked about. So thank you for raising that question. Uh, when you write to the media, say, you know, why don't you talk to Han Howie and Angela? Why aren't they being covered? And they'll talk about this new nuclear arms race. Why aren't you covering that? So I got a lot to say about that one.